Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to start trying to do the final prep so we can actually run the Nissan LEAF motor in our Porsche 911. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan LEAF motor into a Porsche 911. So over the last few months, we've been getting it ready, getting the motor installed. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've done things like putting the drive shafts together. Um, and now I want to just try and bring all these bits together. So sometime in the next month or so, I can actually run the motor in the car. Um, so just a bit of disclosure, I'm actually recording this intro after I've done all the work, uh, which I don't normally do, but uh, I had a bit of a, an audio malfunction with the video um, that I originally recorded, so we're doing it afterwards. Um, so the plan for today was to get the drive shafts that I'd welded up um, a, about a week or two ago and actually get them fully fixed up, so reinstalling the the necessary components from the CV joints, repacking them with grease and getting them all buttoned up so they can be installed in the car. Uh, well, also figuring out how I was going to install them in the car. Um, and then if I have time, we're going to look, we're going to look at some, some more of the, the wiring having previously installed the loom uh, that goes from the motor uh, into the various bits of the car, actually looking at getting that connected in some way, shape or form. So yeah, um, let's start with drive shafts and see where we get to. So we've got our CV axles back together, um, cleaned them out, repacked them with some grease and uh, yeah, re you know, put some new gaiters on where they were needed and then um, yeah, tighten those on. So now we're pretty much ready to get them back in the car. No idea how that's gonna go, but let's see. So now we've got this space to work with, um, the plan that I'm actually going to go with rather than having to do this on both sides is to um, basically see if I can drop the engine slightly, move it out of the way, uh, install the far side with the hub in place and then um, put the engine back, get this side in and then bolt all this back together. So let's see how we get on. So we've undone all the uh, brackets and everything. I ended up having to remove some of them just to be able to, to maneuver the engine around the bay. So what we're gonna try and do is, with the motor shifted slightly, try and get this side's CV axle in, get the motor into position, and then put the other sides in and then bolt up the suspension on the other side. Here it goes.
after all the efforts to build all this out and put it all back together, we've hit a bit of a snag. So the with the shaft in place and pushed into the drive, uh, the right hand side is fine, it's clicked in properly and it's good and secure. I've got a bit of a problem with the, this left hand side though, and that when we try and turn it, you can probably hear that, it's not actually mating with the, um, the gears inside the box. And I think what's happened is when this shaft was being moved from whatever leaf it was in before um, I got a hold of it, the bearing has slid slightly this way along the shaft. So when I push it in, it's not actually going as far into the box as it should be. So we're gonna to have to undo this and then use a little bit of um, I don't know, brute force and ignorance to try and get the bearing closer to this main part of the CV joint so that then the, um, the other end of it will, will mate up properly inside the gearbox. So not ideal, but um, yeah. These are the things that happen when you're using uh, second-hand parts. So I was wrong, the spline shaft's actually making it into the gearbox absolutely fine. The problem is it's not wide enough to make contact with the um, gear in the gearbox. Um, I don't know how this happened, I bought it as a leaf part, I'm not sure if Nissan changed it or if it's actually from a different car. It can't be worn because it doesn't move in or out of the contact, um, so basically it just doesn't fit. Uh, and I'm going to have to go and find one that does and replace it. So that was a bit of a pain. I would have loved to have been able to get the, you know, the connections between the motor and the wheels all sorted today. But yeah, these things happen. Never been one to let a setback get me down. So I'm going to use it as an excuse to get out from underneath the car and start working on um, some other things that still need to happen before we can get wheels turning and that sort of stuff. So what I'm gonna move on to now is building out a control panel so that I can send the necessary signals to the inverter uh, to turn it on, to set it to run, to set forward, reverse and whatever without doing what I've been doing in the past which is basically just touching um, various wires against uh, the positive on a 12 volt battery. So we're gonna build out a control panel, um, get some switches in there that will allow me to um, decide when to send uh, you know those 12 volt signals to the inverter and um, do it in a safe and secure manner. Uh, not going to be the final thing, I still want to figure out um, how I can use the controls that are in the Porsche already, but um, in order to keep things moving forward this will be a, a nice temporary fix that will give me the control I need and um, yeah allow the project to kind of keep moving forward while I have all the other things running on in the background. So let's get to it. So here's the center console and uh, kind of center dash of the Porsche. Um, um, basically, I don't want to be having wires with crocodile clips all over the place as I try and start the car. You know, it's fine in, in the garage, but as soon as I want to, you know, even just drive it out of the garage, I want to have some level of control. So we've got a few open spaces here. Um, in kind of where the radio was and also in the kind of cubby holes. Uh, so I'm gonna create a panel that will slot into one of those, uh, maybe probably with just some double-sided sticky tape and wire it to the various controls in the inverter and behind the dash that we put the wiring in for uh, in a previous video. All right, so here we have a bunch of parts. Um, I've got some plastic here so it's just some black 
ABS plastic, about two mils thick. Um, so we'll cut that down to size and then we can um, kind of drill holes in it and that. We've got some switches. So we're gonna have main power to the inverter. Then we're gonna have a switch to start the inverter, a switch to send power to run the inverter. So this will be so we can uh, choose forward or reverse, which will feed into this, which is basically allowing me to select either forward or reverse. And then I'm gonna add another pair of switches um, which don't have a function just yet, but they're basically going to send the signals to set the inverter um, to run in charge mode, which will allow me to um, basically send uh, charge the battery once I have it in place using the inverter, so I won't have to have a separate charger. But that's a future step. For the moment, these kind of four will be the ones that are are getting the um, the important important information going through them. So let's start measuring and get this this cut up, and then we'll uh, drill some holes in it. So this is from the kind of lower cubby hole section of the center console. Um, I think you can even get this you know cup holders to fit in here, but I don't intend to have cup holes holders. It's a Porsche, so I'm going to use this as a template. Um, trace some lines and get this cut. So there we've got the start of our panel. Um, now I need to mark up some space for the holes for the switches, and then we'll get a drill out and drill some holes. If I was a modern YouTuber, I'd have a 3D printer and I'd do it up in CAD, but I haven't gotten around to that yet, so we're doing it the old-fashioned way. Start with something bigger, cut it down. All right, there we've got our panel, um, good to go. So I'm just gonna wire it up at the back, and <laughs> make sure everything's straight. Basically, we're gonna have 12 volt coming into here, and that's switched on. That'll make 12 volt available to these two. 
um, sorry, to these two and to these two here. This will go to the basically the switched live, so that just a uh, signal you just need to flick it on and off, and that will turn on the inverter. This one, we're going to send power to the two way switch here. We can choose forward and reverse, and then here we're going to send be able to send power to forward and reverse at the same time, which basically puts the inverter into charge mode. So let's get to it. There we go, wired up. Uh, so let's go fit this in the car, see how it looks. I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, obviously not genuine Porsche OE standards, but it's pretty cool. It's not fixed in place at all, uh, and I haven't wired it up, but yeah, switch it on, start the inverter, set it to run, probably be in forward. Need to reverse out the garage. And drive off into the sunset. And then yeah, switch it all off. Set it to charge. So now we're gonna try and tidy up the kind of strange combination of cables we have here into something uh, that makes sense and can be kind of tidied away behind the panels so I can run the car. So I managed to fill up a memory card uh, filming that last bit doing the wiring, uh, but I got it done in the end. So we've got the inverter basically all wired up to um, our panel here. And that will allow us to control the power going to it. So let's um, plug in a small battery and see what happens. All right. Let's see if we can control this thing. Um, everything's set to off. Plugged in the battery. There were no, no, not even tiny sparks when I added the um, positive to it. So I don't think there's any power going to anything until I flick this switch. The I'm attached to the page, web page that controls the inverter, but it's currently set to offline. So that means there's nothing, nothing happening. So let's. Uh, 
click on the first one and see what happens, if anything. Okay, we're off to a good start. We're now online. Um, so I'm just gonna refresh this page once more. Still online, that's positive. And if I go down and check, operation mode is set to off. So that means there's no, no power going to it. So I think if I hit this on, it should then set the inverter into start mode. So there we go, operation mode is now set to run. So we flicked power and I, this is just a, um, it's a switch. So it just needs to send 12 volts for a fraction of a second and it'll stay and run. So that's awesome. So now we've got our um, run switch, which is basically providing power to set something to either uh, forward or reverse. So uh, let's um, flick that on. So this has basically made this switch live. It's, it's only a two position switch. So whatever it's currently set to should be the message or the 12 volt signal that was sent. And we are currently in reverse. So if I switch this over to here and refresh, we're now in forward. If I switch that off, let's see what happens. So that means there's no 12 volt going to the, either the forward or reverse pins on the logic board. And we're now in neutral. All right, so we've got power. I'm gonna set this to start and run. Refresh the page. Go and check the settings. It's in run mode and direction is set to forward. Cool, so what I'll do now is make sure that we're sending throttle signals. And there we go. And let off the throttle a bit. Oh, and accelerate again. And let off. So a few highs and lows in this, uh, in this video. Um, you're always gonna find challenges when using secondhand parts that you've bought on eBay. Um, but it's, it can be a bit frustrating when that happens. Um, obviously we've got a little bit of a um, snag with the drive shaft, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. Hopefully I can just buy the actual CV joint from somewhere and I won't have to go and cut and re-weld the drive shaft. But if we've got to do that, we've got to do that. Um, but then on the plus side, I did get um, kind of some control wiring and switches properly done, which means that I, when I do come to try and drive the car, even if it's not on roads, it can be done in a safe and controlled manner, um, which it definitely wasn't possible before, just kind of touching bare wires to, to battery terminals. Um, so that puts us in a really good place. There's still a few more jobs need to be done apart from the, the drive shafts, obviously. So we need to get some wires going from the inverter to the um, motor. And then we also need to actually get some, a few batteries installed. I'll probably just use the lead acid ones I was using for testing earlier um, in the first instance and you know get the um, pre-charged circuitry hooked up again. Uh, this time I'm going to try and get it wired into the inverter control logic board um, rather than trying to do it manually. So trying to make everything a bit more controlled and secure. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, we're not that far from getting the uh, the car actually moving. Uh, there's still plenty of work that will need to be done before I can get it on the road. Having seen the state of the um, uh, the, the various bushes in the suspension when I was uh, installing the, the drive shafts, they're all going to need 
uh, replacing, there, there's no way they'll pass um, the kind of the roadworthiness test here in the UK. So yeah, lots of work to do, but uh, we're getting closer to another major milestone, uh, which is fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and indeed the entire series. Um, you know, if, if you have found it interesting, if you've got any questions, please do drop a comment. Um, if you like what you're seeing and want to subscribe, please yeah, go ahead and subscribe. You click the notify icon if you want to get told when I've got new videos up. So yeah, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.